Hello and welcome to this FPL Game Week 6 team selection video from me, Holly Shand, for Fantasy Football Community. I can't believe it's Game Week 6 already. The season is just flying by. We was in the early weeks, now we're really into the meat of the season and there's lots to discuss. Game Week 5 was an eventful one. Not the most high scoring game week, few injuries, lots of rotation. Not the best week for me either. As you can see, 54 points at the moment. I'm recording this video on Sunday evening prior to the Spurs-Chelsea game because I'm away next week. So 54 points. I've got Brownhill coming off the bench to take me up to 56 points. But all in all, a very disappointing game week. The double Brighton clean sheet wipeout was particularly painful my defense has been absolutely bossing it the first few weeks of the season and then this week not a single clean sheet bonus point or extra points between them and Liv Ramento, the only defender I didn't play sat on my bench with a clean sheet against Man City so really really frustrating in terms of my team who did perform only four players Rafina got a goal Salah obviously bossed it as captain and definitely got the captain pick right so that was a relief Ronaldo got a goal and Bamford got an assist and that was it really so not the best week at all and I've got a few flags as well so lots to think about going into FPL game week six. Now if you are new here and you're enjoying the video so far don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. So in terms of my potential moves then for game week six I mean, I would love to roll the free transfer. To be honest, I think Trent will be fine. He's not got COVID. I think he was just ill at breakfast on the day of the game. And with Brentford up next, I think that's a great fixture for Trent. So hopefully he can play. I think things were looking a little bit more serious for Ailing and Rafina, which is a bit disappointing with West Ham up next. But I won't need Ailing this week, so I'm not really too worried about his issue the big question is on Rafina. if Rafina isn't fit for game week six then I'm probably gonna have to transfer him out because I don't think I've got enough strength and depth on my bench to to manage so that's the big headache of of having Rafina. and if I was to sell him I don't really know who I'd get I'd like to get some value out of I mean I could go down to Saar because Saar's got another fantastic fixture this week, Newcastle at home, and then leads away. It's a great little run for Watford, so he would probably be first on the shopping list if I had to sell Rafina. But as I said, I would love to roll the free transfer. And the thing is, Rafina's fixtures are so good for so long. If I could go without him this week, that would be great. Now, the reason I really want to roll the free transfer is that I'm looking towards Chelsea and I'm looking towards their fixtures from game week seven onwards, they're just sensational. Southampton, Brentford, Norwich, Newcastle, Burnley. I mean, game week nine, 10, 11, if Lukaku is fit, I'm gonna want to captain him. So I need to think of a way to get him in. And the the popular play right now is to say, well, Ronaldo's fixtures get a bit tougher from game week seven, so you can sell Ronaldo to get Lukaku. But I honestly think that it's not gonna be easy to sell Ronaldo when we get to game week seven at all. And, Everton and Leicester are great fixtures. I think Liverpool and Man City are tough fixtures for Ronaldo, but everything else in that list, and then the Chelsea game in game week 13, everything else in that list is pretty good. His ownership's at 44.2%. His price is going to go up again soon as well, you'd imagine. So for that reason, I think the play by then is going to be to have Lukaku. Liverpool have got tough fixtures coming up, but we're not really going to want to lose Mo Salah during that time. So I think by that point, provided nothing weird happened in terms of Trent, Salah and Ronaldo being injured, the thing I'm going to want to do is bring in Lukaku without losing that core of players. And yes, I could wildcard to achieve that, but it might make me stuck going forward. I'd much rather use my free transfers and possibly take a hit to get to that point and then wildcard out of it rather than having to wildcard to get to it. Because in general, as things stand right now, I'm pretty pleased with the fringes of my squad. So to get Lukaku in then for game week seven, remember that's only one game week from now. If I've got two transfers, I could do Bamford in potentially for Lukaku. I could drop Jota, whose next three fixtures would be City, Watford and Man United. 
probably with Firmino back to affect his minutes. So I could drop Jota. I mean, I could I could drop Jota down to a 4.5 and, and do it in two moves, but then I'd have to utilise my bench. Or I could drop Jota and maybe drop Luke Shaw at that point for United's tougher fixtures, drop him down to a 4.5. And then I could get in that way. I mean, I don't know what which 4.5 I'd be choosing to replace him with. Maybe we just put in Marcel just for now as a placeholder. It still gives me 5.4 million for a midfielder. If I want Saar, though, I'm probably going to have to go all the way down to a 3.9. But as you can see there, it's possible, if I roll my transfer in game week six, it's possible for me to get Lukaku in in game week seven either just using my free transfers or taking one hit, which would be fine. And yeah, could wildcard to achieve that. I could have wildcarded a few weeks to get Ronaldo and Lukaku in. But I feel like as time goes by, we will know more or have more confidence in which cheap players are going to deliver. I mean, Ben Rama, I think he's got three bonus against Manchester United. That 10-pointer is absolutely killing me with his ownership over 30%. And the fixtures look okay actually for West Ham going forward so he could be a potential Rafina replacement or he could be a good downgrade from Jota as well but that would mean that I'd be starting to lose some serious funds elsewhere so that would be my plan with my transfers for game week six roll the free transfer and then look to be bringing in Lukaku in game week seven, hopefully without the wild card. I mean, I'm not against wild carding. I'd quite like to wild card into the international in the international break before game week eight because it just gives you a bit more time, really. But I am flexible with that. I'd quite like to save the wild card because I know at some point I'm going to want to drop Lukaku, probably game week twelve around then. Um, and just having that wild card in my back pocket will just really help me going forward. So. That's the plan at the moment. I'm still not convinced on those four premiums, but I'm I'm pretty sure that a couple more good performances from Chelsea and Ronaldo will mean that in no way will I want to swap Ronaldo to Lukaku, but I'll definitely want Lukaku in. So in terms of my team selection then for game week six, I can get back onto a 3-4-3 formation. And to be honest, in terms of my defenders... They've got pretty good fixtures. Trent's got Brentford. Sanchez and Veltman have got Crystal Palace. And Luke Shaw's got Aston Villa at home. And then looking at the attack, what I'm really encouraged by is that four of my players have got home fixture. I only had Mo Salah last week with a home fixture. Now, captaincy, I am tempted to go with the players with the home fixture. I know Salah against the promoted Brentford looks good on paper. However, Brentford have been pretty good defensively so far this season. I could captain Damari Gray against Norwich, but I've got a few trust issues with Everton after they had a spectacular 10 minutes for all the wrong reasons against Aston Villa in game week five. So probably going to be Ronaldo captain. I mean, Antonio against Leeds away is a pretty good fixture as well. But I'll probably give the vice captain to grey although it shouldn't matter too much now in terms of transfers this week remember looking at those fixtures there's midweek games for all the teams involved in the Carabao Cup including the seven European teams that are involved so lots can happen between now and the game week six deadline so try and hold your transfers until Friday after the press conferences or Saturday morning now just having a quick look at the fixtures just to give you an idea of where else we could look for captaincy. Chelsea against Manchester City does limit the options somewhat in terms of captaincy because you're going to want to avoid that fixture. I really like Mo Salah though, even though it's Brentford. Ronaldo's the standout. You could look at Jamie Vardy, who has got a great fixture against Burnley at home. He's in form at the moment. Spurs have got Arsenal away and Harry Kane absolutely loves that fixture. So he's another one to consider as well. And Ishmael Assar at home to Newcastle. Again, he's on fire. He's a talisman of that Watford side. He could do very well in that game. So lots of different options there for the captaincy, but they would be the main ones. If you've got any questions about your own team, do get in the comments and I'll do my best to answer all of them before the deadline. If you haven't subscribed yet and you've enjoyed this video, please do as well. No stream this week because I'm away, but you will find 
the next episode of FPL Hacks over on the Wolves YouTube channel by Tuesday. I hope you enjoy it. Good luck everyone for FPL Game Week 6.